When I was a kid, I grew up in New York City, and you would think New York City has nothing to do with oysters. But the area where I grew up in, we were on, right next to the shore, and there were oyster bars there. But I knew that they kind of at an early age, I was very comfortable with them. Oysters are a very important critter in the marine environment. They're what you call a keystone species. When oysters form an oyster bed or an oyster reef, they provide habitats for many other organisms that are critical. Such as fish, baby fish, crabs, there's all sorts of invertebrates that attach and live there. And so with, if you take that oyster bar away, a lot of your local fishing goes away. They're also an ecosystem engineer in the sense that they're important for mitigating shoreline impacts and preventing shoreline erosion. Well, Irma really highlighted the fact that a good storm can destroy a lot of property. Oyster bar, you know, which is basically a breakwater for a storm, you know, good oyster bars help minimize that impact. Oysters are a filter feeder, which means they take in water, pull some nutrients out of the water, and then expel it. But they also, while they do that, they purify the water. So they'll take out algae, they'll take out some impurities, they might take out even such things as, uh, in some cases, microplastics, which is getting to be a bigger problem. And so they purify the water, they do it in a natural way. You know, they're an excellent food source because they have everything in them. They're high in proteins, low levels of vitamins, things like that. None of the bad stuff that we eat is in there, right? It's not loaded with sugar. So I met Dr. Manning when I had a class with him for environmental chemistry as a Maymester class. It was really short and compact. I learned a lot of interesting things about environmental chemistry. And at the time, he was, he was still currently working on making oyster bars and making the proper mixture. So this is doing it in practice. He's been working on it for a while. And then I started working with him with not only this project, but a couple of other side projects he's got going on. I've been doing it to gain experience. And every time I've seen the actual growth from even ones that he's done in the past, it's, it seems to be more efficient than any other control method that he's had so far. What Dr. Manning is doing is he is working on reef restoration and looking at a way to attract wild spat to attach to his substrate. That process strictly is putting out substrate in the natural environment to attract as many wild spat that are naturally in the water column. And so that has very practical purposes when we get into putting in oysters in areas that are where it's needed or using them for soft engineering projects. So oysters naturally reproduce every year in the spring as they come out of winter and the water starts warming up and as it gets later into spring, April, May, the water is warm enough and the oysters will naturally spawn and so the males will release their sperm into the water and the females release their eggs into the water and for a two to three week period those eggs will develop into larvae and then when they're what we say they're ready to set, which is ready to cement themselves, those larvae will go down, find a suitable place, and they will cement themselves, and then that's where they are for the rest of their lives. So how our material works is it provides an artificial substrate for an oyster larvae that's floating through the water column to settle on because they won't settle just anywhere. They have to have a specific chemistry. And so what we do is we get a specific chemistry that that oyster larvae or spat likes, and then it settles and it grows there very fast. Dr. Manning's artificial reef technology is a biodegradable because the concrete is not as stable as regular concrete, which is actually a good thing. So over time, this concrete is going to biodegrade and the oysters and all the biomaterial is actually left. There's also nutrients that are incorporated into the materials that stimulate microbial growth. The biofilms serve as an attractant and the larvae settling onto the surface will be the start of the oyster bed, either a new layer or the beginning of the oyster bed. Two groups enter the National Pitch Contest with Ocean Exchange, and both groups made it to the finals. Uh, one of them was with material for oyster and coral restoration, 
And the other one was with a new antibiotic for TB, our group developed. What it does for us is it gives our students some great experience, but it also helps us bring our ideas into a commercialization arena where it can be evaluated as to whether or not it should move forward. So for Ocean Exchange, our goal is to kind of bridge the gap between academic research and a commercialization process. This project is an ideal candidate for Ocean Exchange because it is trying to solve a problem that is very widespread. Decimation of oysters is prevalent everywhere. I initially heard of Ocean Exchange whenever there was a call for a collegiate competition in order to try to show our research and how it could have a commercialization potential. We met several people after our presentation that were influential in getting this technology to the Georgia coast, as well as refining the goals of our project. Worldwide, in the last 100, 150 years, oyster populations have dropped by 85%, and there are some extreme cases like the Chesapeake Bay, Maryland, and Virginia, where it dropped by 99%. The state of Louisiana has put out a press releases that they want to renovate the southern coast. It's a $50 billion project. New York City is investing in the Billion Oyster Project, where they want to bring back oysters in New York Harbor. London is investing in oysters along its coastline. Worldwide, this is a problem, and the natural solution are oysters. Our material can attract and grow oysters better than any other material out there that we know of. Oysters fulfill vital niche in marine environments, and they also preserve uh, coastal environments, which a lot of the population of the world lives in. So I think it's important for environmentally and for uh, society in general.